Welcome to the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Saturday, September 7th. Over the next few days, we will have changes to the weather. We will have a area of low pressure moving in, increasing our winds today over western areas, and these winds will spread eastward over the next few days. Most of these wind gusts will be between 25 and 35 miles per hour with relative humidity in the single digits or teens. We will still have smoke impacts today in the north, and we'll have to watch that for Sunday, but we will also have an increase in lightning and moisture pushing north today into eastern Nevada, and then eventually by Sunday pushing up into Idaho. And these thunderstorms will be a mix of wet and dry, so the big, biggest risks will be new lightning starts, gusty outflow winds on existing incidents, and there could be some brief rainfall. Otherwise, Monday, we will see the wind push more into Idaho and Wyoming, and this will suppress the lightning further south and be a mix well, mostly on the wetter side, but could see some mix of wet and dry storms as well. Over the last 24 hours, we only saw isolated lightning along the Sierra front with minimal rainfall. Yesterday, we saw generally light initial attack with 14 new fires for just over 36 acres. Over the last 7 to 14 days, we've continued to see below normal precipitation in most areas as any moisture with thunderstorms has been spotty. The ERC point map shows this drier trend well with the most critical ERCs on the western and northern sides of the Great Basin, where some areas are still above the 90th percentile. And we are seeing ERCs on the rise in Utah, although they're still generally below the 50th or 70th percentile. Currently, some of our ERC charts where we saw lightning yesterday along the Sierra front and where we will see wind today, ERCs are around the 90th percentile. We will see those come down a little bit going into the seven day period, just with cooler temperatures later this week, but in the meantime, will remain high during these windy periods. Also in Northeast Nevada, where we will see lightning returning here over the next couple of days, ERCs are above normal and still above the 80th percentile. The satellite image from this morning shows that area of low pressure moving into Northern California. So again, we'll be increasing our winds and also pushing that moisture north for thunderstorm activity. Today, again, looking at the weather pattern for this afternoon, you can see a generally dry conditions across the Great Basin, but that moisture is moving north in central areas. So we will see that lightning threat and we do have some high risk for that. Otherwise, the winds will be picking up along the Sierra front, and especially after the lightning yesterday, we could see some holdovers popping up with those gusty winds and dry conditions. Relative humidity remains in the teens in many areas of the Great Basin, just some single digits down south. You can see the wind gusts for this afternoon really picking up along, especially the southern areas of the Sierra front, but also into western Nevada. And then you can see the indicators for the gusty outflow winds over eastern Nevada. Temperatures today will still be very warm across the Great Basin, well above normal, mid 90s for central Idaho in the lower elevations and low to mid 90s in northern Nevada. And you can see the thunderstorm potential still on the isolated side with respect to number of strikes, but located mainly over eastern and parts of central Nevada. As we move into Sunday, this moisture starts to spread further north up into Idaho. We will continue to see those gusty winds over western and northern Nevada, so we do continue to see that high risk. But again, those winds will generally be in the 30s. And then you can see the lightning threat over much of northeast Nevada and northwest Utah up into Idaho and Wyoming. Relative humidity will drop into the single digits for northwest Nevada, where those winds will start picking up, otherwise in the teens. And you can see that swath of gusty winds anywhere from the Sierra front up into northern Nevada. Many of these areas in orange will be gusts in the upper 20s to right around 30 miles per hour, and we'll see the strongest gusts along the Sierra front, where we'll see those gusts peak above 35 or even closer to 40 miles per hour at times. We will see breezy winds up in Idaho, but any so any thunderstorms that do develop will likely be pretty quick and fast moving, but the main convection will be located over eastern Nevada and up into southern and eastern Idaho into northwest Utah and Wyoming. Temperatures will only come down a few degrees, but still remain above normal. And you can see the thunderstorm potential here on the right. The greatest coverage will be in Nevada and western Utah, but we will see isolated thunderstorms in parts of central and eastern Idaho. Any lightning in southwest Idaho might occur in the morning, but be on the pretty much on the isolated side if they do get a chance to develop otherwise the activity further east. As we move into Monday, drier air pushes into the northern half of the Great Basin, keeping that thunderstorm potential more into central and southern Utah. However, we will see those gusty winds spread across the northern areas, so we do have a large area of high risk for those gusty winds and low relative humidities. Also, many of these areas will have seen lightning in recent days. Relative humidity, again, remains in the single digits to teens across much of the western and northern side of the Great Basin and only higher in central Utah where those thunderstorms will continue. 
You can see from the wind gusts, a lot of these areas in the north will be gusting between about 20 and 30 miles per hour. Again, with those gusts strongest along the Sierra front, uh, where we'll see some gusts between 30 and 35 miles per hour. Temperatures will drop maybe a degree or so, but still remaining generally in the low 90s over the northern half of the Great Basin and the lower elevations. And then you can see the probability of thunderstorms here over much of Utah, possibly still into eastern Nevada. The three-day precipitation, any thunderstorms we see will be on the isolated side, so limited moisture and very spotty. The only areas that may see some wetting rains would be probably over parts of the Arizona Strip into parts of Utah. So on Tuesday, as this area of low pressure starts to drop south, we'll still see some breezy winds across northern areas, but currently no high risk, but we'll continue to watch some areas of Nevada. However, by Wednesday, as this trough drops further south, we will see stronger winds picking up in southern and central areas of the Great Basin, so we do have some high risk to indicate that. However, this area of low pressure, the models are still struggling with the exact position and how strong this trough will be, so these conditions could change as we get a little bit closer, but we will definitely see some sort of a trough moving in, giving us some periods of gusty winds or even precipitation, especially in the north. This will linger into Thursday as the cold front sweeps through, and then on Friday, drier conditions and gradually warming temperatures. However, we'll still light, likely stay in this low fire potential risk uh, for mo much of the Great Basin, except for the west side, which will be on the drying side. Otherwise, temperatures will be cooling with the system by midweek. So by Wednesday, we'll see highs drop into the 70s over the northern half of the Great Basin, and then highs only in the 60s in the far north on Thursday. This also means that our overnight lows will be dropping significantly as well. Up in central Idaho and Wyoming, where we see our large fires, we'll see lows in the low 30s on Thursday morning and near or even just below freezing in some areas on Friday morning. So definitely cold temperatures coming later this week. Seven-day precipitation shows that second system coming through, so you can see better chances of wetting rains in parts of central Idaho and Wyoming. But again, still some discrepancies as far as exactly how this system will move through. So some of these wetting rain areas may change as we get closer, but we'll continue to monitor that. The 8 to 14 day outlook taking us through the into the third week of September shows kind of a mix of near normal temperatures or slightly warmer on the east side and then near normal precipitation, possibly some additional precipitation in the north. That concludes our webcast for today. Check back tomorrow for the latest updates.